Good morning, I'm Bob Bruce. Last summer, Attorney General Edwin Meese issued a massive report concerning the state of pornography in America. Penthouse Forum a magazine, Eric Nadler, recently issued his own opinion of that report, and today comes face to face with Meese Commission member Diane Cusack. Pornography, it seems that everyone has a viewpoint. Where do you stand? We'll examine both sides next on Twin Cities Live. <laughs> Cities Live. I hope you had a nice weekend. Uh, let me ask you, do you know, what's, what's your definition of pornography? Oh, boy. I, <laughs> I guess uh, nude, nude bodies, I guess. What's your definition of pornography? Um, I don't really have a definition, but uh, some people might think that it's dirty pictures or something like that, but it's all in the eyes of the beholder, I think. Say a couple of days. Pornography contributes to sexual violence against women and degrades women in this country would be better off without pornography. Yeah. I see a friend or two. <laughs> but, but if material is not found to be legally obscene and our government starts to limit that material, limiting creative ideas of book publishers, magazine publishers, movie producers, what's the difference in our government and the government of the Soviet Union and even the Nazis when they burned books because it didn't conform to their political ideas. These, there is none, there's a, a comment back there. These are the two sides of this coin. It is a very complicated issue. It is a very emotional issue. And we have two excellent guests today to talk about both sides of this issue that really is confronting our nation today. First of all, Diane Cusack, who is a member of the now, well, I'll tell you, it's a well-talked about <laughs> Mies Commission. And, of course, the Attorney General's uh, report on pornography. And Eric Nadler, who is the editor for Penthouse's Forum magazine. Welcome to Twin Cities Live. Thank you. Diane, let's begin with you, I guess. Right. Why? Uh, because there, there was a presidential commission in 1970 that did a report on pornography in America. And they came out with a report that basically said that pornography does not contribute violence against women and, and, and that sort of thing. Why now, in the past year, did the Attorney General suddenly decide that we needed a commission to study pornography? Well, I don't think it was a sudden decision, Bob. I think that this is something that President Reagan had been hearing about from his constituency for quite a number of years. And it was indeed just about two years ago that he asked Attorney General Meese, to form, or William French Smith at the time, to form this commission and take another look at uh, a report that was done 16 years ago and was rejected by the president and by Congress at that time. Uh, there were indications that things have changed dramatically in this area in the last 15 why years. Why was the so. original? Why was the original report uh, rejected? Be, because of their conclusions, uh, the president and Congress was not willing to accept from them uh, the asser assertion that pornography was totally harmless and that if we just left it alone and legalized prostitution, that the ills of the country would cease. And it was not accepted by the public either. What were your instructions? What were the goals that were laid out by the Justice Department? In, in brief words, we had three goals. First was to determine if the nature of pornography has changed since 1968, the commission studied this. Secondly, is it in any way harmful to our society, any way at all? And thirdly, if we find that there is any harm from these materials, what do we recommend that the Department of Justice can do about it? And that basically is what we spent one year doing. Okay, now we get to the findings. What right. did the commission find? What did they recommend? Well, we went through a very um, legalistic kind of process, and I, I would really like to emphasize that. We had a limited budget, and we had limited time. So we spent almost all of both the time and the money in holding public hearings around the country. And it was from those public hearings as well as from written testimony that was submitted to us from our own knowledge of articles that we had read and our own background and also considering this against the social and cultural fabric of the United States today 
that this, co this commission unanimously reached the conclusion that sexually violent materials cause aggression against women and that sexually explicit and degrading materials are definitely contributing to aggression toward women. And those are basically the findings. And those... And those findings uh, not accepted by, by one and all, Eric? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, uh, Mr. Cusack, you misspeak yourself when you say the commission unanimously came to those conclusions. In fact, there were two stinging dissents presented by uh, two female members of the commission, one of whom, Dr. Judith Becker, a Columbia University psychologist, um, said she did not believe in the simple Simon theory that if you look at materials, you go out and replicate what it is you see there. And in fact, Dr. Becker had a very special interest in this area. She counsels rape victims. And she told me in an interview, she said, Eric, if I could uh, prove, or if I believed the data indicated beyond uh, reasonable doubt, or even suggested convincingly that looking at materials caused sex crimes, I would have signed that report, I would have endorsed it. In fact, she uh, blasted the report as a political hatchet job going in. Well, now let me... Just one minute, though. Sure. I did not misspeak myself. Dr. Becker and Ms. Levine, Mrs. Levine both voted for those conclusions when the votes were taken at our final working session. But and you, you were there and heard right, them right. both. You know... You... You know as well as I do that the final hours of the Mies Commission were a uh, hodgepodge of procedural votes. What is more important is the statements that they attached, uh, whether they raised their hand or not uh, in votes which Dr. Becker said she couldn't remember while I was on the floor. I believe, I, no, I, let me speak. I believe that when you issue a carefully worded statement repudiating the year-long work of a commission, I think that's very important. And Diane, you know, that that's where Dr. Becker came out on this issue. Now, let me say another thing. The 1970 commission was the most thorough study of erotica ever taken. It had a $2 million budget. It had two, excuse me, it had two years to study the issue, and it conducted original research in which social scientists conducted research on the effects of the material. It came to the conclusion that social, uh, sexually explicit materials caused no antisocial pro uh, problems. It also called for the institution of a massive sex education program in this nation and said nothing could be more important. That conclusion was also reached by a 1979 commission in Great Britain, and that conclusion was also reached by a 1984 Canadian commission. This commission conducted no original research, held public hearings in which the uh, testimony of individuals, they knew going in what it would be like, this was a waste of taxpayers' money, which has been repudiated by the very social scientists who you've quoted in the final report. Dr. Edward Donnerstein, who you relied on for his uh, discussion of sexually violent materials, said he found the conclusions of the Mies Commission mm -hmm. All right. absolutely All right. bizarre. Now you're pointing that particular area. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad you brought up that commission because your magazine came out after that commission, putting out uh, may a magazine that was much more explicit than America had ever seen. You, Penthouse, started it with getting women to spread their legs and it, uh, uh, doing a lot of erotica. And then everyone else had to kind of jump in to follow. So I, I think the 1970 commission is pretty outdated after Penthouse came. Right. Also, if you find that something is being harmful and destructive, like, say, cancer. Don't you have to start doing research when people are being seducted, they're being abducted, they're being raped, they're being murdered? Then, when people are starting to be murdered and hurt, that's when we've got to start taking action. But I think some people... Some people... Uh, uh, Eric would, would say that this commission uh, did not do research, any type of scientific research. It basically gathered opinions and did some interviews and in a very short amount of time put this report together, which is very different than the 1970 commission. In your opinion, Eric, is magazines such as Playboy, Penthouse, etc., is, is that harmful to the public? Oh, absolutely not. And, if, and I think... Uh, <laughs> 
In fact, uh, several uh, Mies Commission members have already gone on record saying that they don't believe that Playboy and Penthouse should be uh, prosecuted and should not be considered obscene. Dr. James Dobson has said that. Dr. Park Dietz has said that. Chairman Henry Hudson has said that. Uh, Diane, is that correct? Say, Eric, how can you say that they go on record uh, saying those kind of things when the Penthouse and Play uh, Playboy have actually uh, have a suit against these commission, the commission members, $10 million, who are, they're not going to be backed up by the government. This is going to be, if they lose, which I know they won't, uh, they, they would have to go out of their pocket. And why should we be talking about the 70 commission when it's now? Go ahead, okay, let, me, let me answer that question. You yeah, talk about why Playboy and Penthouse got very upset with this commission. <coughs> Even though this commission at the end uh, only recommended the prosecution of legally obscene materials, um, it uh, engaged in some what I call guerrilla action against the men's sophisticated industry. A letter went out from the executive director of the commission on the part... What kind of guerrilla action? Uh, I'm telling you. Okay, a letter went out by the executive director of the commission, Alan Sears, who happens to be a high official of the Southern Baptist Convention, um, uh, in which he sent to uh, convenience stores and major American corporations the following uh, note saying, you have been identified in testimony as a distributor of pornography. Unless we hear from you in 30 days, we'll take this accusation to be true. Uh, he did not include who said this. Uh, the guy who made the statement, the testimony in front of the commission, is a fellow by the name of Reverend Donald Wildman, head of the National Federation for Decency, a right-wing extremist who's been engaged in a year-long campaign to wipe uh, sex off uh, American culture. In fact, and, uh, because of this letter, in fact, he has because of this letter, then Penthouse and Playboy were taken out of the right. Seven Eleven stores all the over the The Southland time. Corporation. Now Diane's shaking her head here. Go ahead. That's Diane. right. They have been removed from some stores, but that letter had absolutely nothing to do with it. Those were marketing decisions made by nationwide corporations, and that. But you must were, admit, you must admit that those getting decision, a, those decisions were in the making long before our report was issued and long before they got that letter. Now that letter, yeah, that, Pete, they Pete. have been under, they have been yes. under siege, if you will, by They're, various fundamentalist groups in this country. Let me hold you there for a second. And, you, and, you, and okay. the Department of Justice helped them along, receiving a letter from the Department of Justice saying you are going to be named an official government report as a it distributor of pornography. That. It did. It did not, it did. Eric. It did. The letter said you have been identified by someone who spoke before us, who testimony. gave us testimony. Mm -hmm. What is your response? This is your opportunity to respond. But why, why should, why should individual businesses be, be singled out uh, by the Justice Department, especially it was a handful of businesses, and be sent a letter uh, what, what, what did because you expect that, the reaction well, to be, that especially was the, the interest, Justice Department? That was the interest of fair play. Uh, those uh -huh. transcripts, those transcripts are public record, and I felt personally that those corporations like Time and CBS, as well as Playboy and Penthouse and these others, should have an opportunity to rebut an accusation that was made in public and will remain in the public record forever. And that was why that letter was sent. It looks kind of like it's coercion to me. Uh, in the interest of fair play, you say, I don't really believe that. I also believe that uh, if you're going to have a scientific study like the study was back in the 70s, uh, you come up with concrete kind of uh, verifiable facts. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, like what Eric said, that uh, this was not a scientific study. Well, I have a social work major. I know what a scientific study is. I, well, and I haven't I, seen any proof by this. But if you any, know everything what that the Mies Commission has said to me, I, there's no way to prove it to me. If, it, you if you are, if me you are familiar with social science research and a scientific study, then I am sure you would agree with me that an issue of this nature will never be decided in the laboratory. It would be highly unethical to do research on what is happening to prepubescent sexual attitudes. You do not take 2,000 young people and submit them to hardcore pornography and then sit back and wait and see how many women they rape. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Uh, Thank you for holding on the line. Go ahead with your question. Hi, Bob. Hi. Well, um, I just wanted to say that uh, I think all the education and, you know, of course, it's not ethical to do all these studies, but the fact of the matter is people are responsible for their own actions. You have the right to read and make discriminating choices. And by, by giving pornography, um, I think, so much emphasis and saying, oh, this contributes to rape, you're taking away the responsibility from the rapist, from the person who commits the crime, 
people have to take responsibility for their own actions, and um, that responsibility gives you the right to read, make your own choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, basically what I wanted to Thank say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diane, I think uh, one thing that a lot of Americans are concerned about, and a lot of publishers, and I'm not talking about just publishers of Playboy and Penthouse, mm -hmm but also publishers, just uh, regular book publishers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of, this, of the establishment, uh, not, not into uh, the type of magazines or whatever that Eric is involved in. They're very, very, very concerned that this report will start us on the road down the hill to government censorship, and where will it all end? What, you, because even in the report, the one thing I was confused about is that the commission itself could not come up with a definition for pornography. Wrong. It is in the report. It is right there. It's at the top of the page. I don't what remember the, the page number. Yeah. For our purposes, for our working definition of pornography, we defined it as being predominantly sexually explicit material whose main intent is sexual arousal. That doesn't make any pejorative comment about whether it's good or bad. It describes a body of material. And I don't even think Eric could disagree with the fact that his magazine fits that definition. However, when we came to our 92 recommendations... We're going to have to, we're going to, have to stop right there, Diane, okay. take a break. and come back, I'll let you continue with that thought. We'll be back with more on Twin Cities Live. JCPenney presents the Hoover Clean Sale and some very good reasons why you need this handy electric Hoover Quick Broom. So portable, lightweight, and powerful. Now just $39.99. This deluxe Hoover convertible upright with powerful 4.8 amp motor and full-time edge cleaning deep cleans for only $89.99. And this powerful Hoover Spirit Power Nozzle Canister with 2.2 peak horsepower motor complete with attachments can tackle your toughest cleaning for just $169.99. Get your house clean. Hoover Clean. On sale now at JCPenney. Does weather like this wreck your good leather shoes? Then all day long, does the wet, clammy leather make you feel you're in fish bowls? Not if you have Chromatics Pocketable Stretch Rubber Footwear from Totes. Chromatics Footwear in their own small pouch with long wear anti-skid soles. Made of stretchy, real rubber so they go on easy. So light and comfortable, you can feel like a kid again. Yippee! Chromatics Rubber Footwear by Totes. Five styles for men and women. Makes a great gift. Budget Power, the home improvement expert, celebrates with store-wide savings during the birthday sale. Save on AirCare's entire collection of stylish bath fans, featuring whisper-quiet ventilation, convenient lighting, and warm, flowing heat. Add elegance to your bath with space-saving Logasa Pedestal Labs. They're sculptured in a variety of exciting shapes, sizes, and colors. Get the latest in style and design in bound glass fixtures from PD West. These matching fixtures add to any decor. Shop the birthday sale at Budget Power, the home improvement expert. No doubt about it, there's a baby boom. Couples everywhere are reproducing before their options are up. But are you one of those people who have decided parenthood just isn't for you? If you and your spouse have remained childless by choice, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like you to be a guest on Twin Cities Live because we want to hear your story and share it with our audience. The reasons, the ramifications of your decision not to be parents. Now please call us at 641-1298 and share your story with others who may be wrestling with that same issue, trying to make a decision whether or not to have children. That's six four one one two nine eight. Opportunity to finish up on, on if your... I may, we yeah. had just defined pornography as a body of material mm -hmm. whose predominant purpose is sexual arousal. Almost all of our recommendations, however, speak to obscene materials. And obscene materials are a subcategory that has been very carefully defined by the Supreme Court. There are troubles with the definition, but it's been there since 1973. And obscene materials are not censorship, folks, let me tell you that. These are, materials, these are materials that have never been protected by the First Amendment of the United States. They have been actively prosecuted for 150 years in this country. And they are prosecuted by what we hold most dear, which is our legal system, our court system. It is not censorship and it is not vigilantism. Okay, before I get Eric a chance to jump in there, go ahead. I was, I was just going to comment on what Diane said. 
two Supreme Court decisions, the Roth decision of 57 and the Miller decision of 73, said that obscenity is not protected free speech. That's right. And they gave a three-pronged test. It must appeal to the prurient interest in sexuality. It must be patently offensive and lack four values. It must lack literary, artistic, political, and scientific value. And the other point that you made, Diane, I think is really great, that in this country, the definition of sen uh, censorship uh, by our law is prior restraint, and there's no prior right. restraint. But if a publisher like Penthouse or the adult bookstores do do something, then they have to face the law. There's absolutely no prior restraint. The other point I'd like to make is that that original report of uh, 1970 was rejected by Congress on a vote of 60 to 5 because of its primary conclusion that you can't prove that just because somebody uses this material that you perform a criminal act. Eric, um, well said. Many people uh, on, on your side of this issue would say that they find nothing offensive about uh, Playboy or Penthouse. And in fact, millions of Americans, millions of just average people that live in suburbia have bought those magazines for years. And now all of a sudden, uh, they're being told by a commission that was set up that they're obscene. Right. One of the uh, greatest... No, they're not. But let Eric have his chance here. One of the greatest failures of this commission was its uh, absolute refusal to probe the, a fascinating question. Why are millions of Americans choosing to buy these magazines such as Playboy and Penthouse? Why did 60 million Americans rent X-rated X video cassettes last year? Why is pornography or sexually oriented or sexually explicit materials the uh, entertainment of choice for millions and millions of Americans? This commission never seriously wanted to discuss sexually oriented materials and uh, its benefits. What this commission did, and I have to say, Diana, I take uh, exception to what you just said when you say these materials were actively prosecuted. In fact, obscenity prosecution in the United States was practically dead in this country. In fact, Jimmy Carter's uh, Justice Department, with its handful of prosecutions, um, did way more than William Friend Smith and way more than Ed Meese. Federal prosecutors know this is not a serious concern, as most prosecutors know this well, is let not me a serious ask, Let me ask you a question here. Let me ask you a question. What would you say, Diane, to the people who say, well, what we don't know won't hurt us? Well, if let, we go into a store and there's Penthouse and Playboy, well, and let, we don't buy it, how's it going to hurt us? Uh, Eric is making the mistake that most of the media has been making, and I have to come to the conclusion that they're doing it on purpose. Playboy has never been found to be obscene. And if you relate that to what I just said, we are recommending the prosecution of obscene materials. But, but is it not a fact that by that letter that was sent out last February that Playboy and Penthouse were, were both... Were called pornographic. Well, with, it's not the obscene. same thing as censorship. There. No, because it isn't. You're censoring no, it what's isn't. available to it, the public, no, are you not? I just gave you the definition we used for pornography. That is not a pejorative statement. It's a descriptive statement. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we used it in our report. Now, everybody who reads that report, I hope, is going to bring their value system to what they read in there. If their value system finds that that definition of por pornography equates with something bad, that's their conclusion, not the Mies Commission conclusion. But you, but you must admit that for any businessman, when that letter came down from the Justice Department, they were quivering in their boots. They knew that, hey, if we don't get these magazines out of our stores, we may be dealing with the federal government here. Well, now, and I'll isn't tell you, that, that's a marketing decision. Do if you they feel know that, that people some people have them. a legitimate, that some people have a legitimate gripe about government stepping in too far as far as the censorship of materials in this country? Well, I, I think the government is overstepping its bounds in lots of areas, but not in censorship. Let me take a call from home here, Eric. Uh, thank you for holding on the line. Go ahead with your uh, question or comment on Twin Cities Live. Go ahead. Um, yeah, when I was 16, I was raped by two boys that were younger than I was, and, uh, they had one of the magazines, I don't remember which one, and they made me do the positions in this magazine and forced me into these acts with them. We have heard a lot of testimony like that, um, uh, during our commission hearings. And I find that some of that testimony will probably stay with me for the rest of my life. Uh, a similar one to this young woman's statement on the telephone. It was a young woman who said that the same thing had happened to her and she ended up in drugs and in prostitution and in the pornography industry in having lots of photographs taken of her in these various attitudes and positions. 
And when she straightened up, which she did, I mean, she left the industry, she got herself together, she got clean of drugs, she was back in college, and we asked her, what do you think is the, the worst part of your experience? And she said, the very worst part is the fact that no matter what I managed to do with my life, whatever I managed to make of myself, those pictures are going to be out there being leered at for the rest of my life. Okay, can I just, can I just say something about this, Bob? This um, victim testimony uh, was perhaps one of the lowest moments of the Mies Commission. When you don't have the facts, when you don't have convincing arguments, you shock. And this is what the Mies Commission did uh, trumpily. Now, now, let me let now. Now. Okay, of this commission that studied pornography, it seems like 98% of it was like anti-porn people. I'd like to have you explain to me, oh, if I read Penthouse, Playboy, or whatever magazine, that should lead me to rape. We had a whole audience here that's pretty much railroading over Penthouse. Eric, what about, well, you brought okay. up a good, a good okay. question there. Right. It, uh, the, right. the makeup of the commission, okay. explain to us how All right. this kind this of folks are This is supposedly an objective government commission which is going to study a pressing social issue. So who do they get to chair this commission? They get a Virginia prosecutor who earned a White House commendation for prosecuting uh, X-rated uh, um, uh, tapes. Uh, if you had a video store and you sold X-rated tapes in Arlington County, Virginia, Chairman Henry Hudson prosecuted you. He's known in the Washington Post as Hang My Henry. Another member of the commission you have there is a Franciscan priest, Father Bruce Ritter, who believes his church is teaching that pornography is a sin, going right in. You also have Reverend James Dobson, a radio evan Dr. James Dobson, a, excuse me, a radio evangelist who has preached that uh, pornography is a river of smut flooding our nation, and whose wife Shirley tears up men's magazines in convenience stores. And he also is a go-go promoter. He earned five dollars. So in other words, that is absolutely true. And you don't want to hear the truth. You just what about Diane? What about Diane? And, okay, and Diane, excuse me. Diane, when you got uh, appointed to the commission, a local reporter in Scottsdale, Arizona, said, "Why were you elected to the commission?" You said, "I have no idea. I don't know." They asked you, "What do you know about pornography?" You say, "I don't know a lot. I'm going to try to learn." Now, let me suggest to you, and I hope I'm not too cynical on this. I think I'm right. Scottsdale, Arizona, happens to be the national headquarters of the Citizens for Decency Through Law, one of the leading and anti-porn groups in this country. And imagine this conflict of interest. This was shocking as a journalist. Okay, I've got to yes, stop you right there, Diane. i got to take no. a break. We'll be right back okay. and you can respond no, to whatever no, I've got, got to a say. point to make. That okay, but we got we got to take a break. We'll be Thank right you. back. Or someone you know has a hearing problem, you may not know where to turn. I'd like to talk to you about Miracle Ear, because like 22 million other people with hearing loss, you may be unsure about what to do. You may believe that your hearing loss is not severe enough to use a hearing aid. You may have been told you have nerve deafness and that a hearing aid won't help you. But now there's Miracle Ear's sophisticated technology designed to help nerve deafness. And Miracle Ear has helped thousands of people just like you to hear and understand more clearly. Perhaps you have difficulty hearing in large groups, or background noise is a problem. People say your TV is turned up too loudly, or you might have problems hearing on the phone or in the auditorium. Now's the time to write down this number, 1-800-247-3600. Call now about Miracle Ear, the tiny all-in-the-ear hearing aid you can barely see. It has no wires, cords, or tubes. Miracle Ear is custom made and custom fit to your ear, and it's so small, you may be surprised how many people are wearing Miracle Ear. Simply because you've never noticed it. Call toll free now, and we'll send you more information on how Miracle Ear may help you. You'll also learn more about the walk in convenience of our Miracle Ear centers and how you may obtain a hearing test to see if Miracle Ear is right for you. Call now, 1-800-247-3600, with no cost or obligation. Of course, not everyone can be helped with hearing aids. But why not find out today if you may be helped by Miracle Ear? If you hear but don't always understand the words, Miracle Ear may change your life. Call now to learn more about Miracle Ear and the walk-in convenience of the Miracle Ear Center nearest you. Write to this address or call 1-800-247-3600. Miracle Ear. We're helping people listen to life again. 
This year alone, a stroke will strike more than half a million families. And the effects of a stroke can be absolutely devastating, often leaving its survivors speechless or paralyzed. But little can be done to prevent a stroke, and its warning signs are very vague. On Monday's Twin Cities Live, we'll meet three stroke survivors and their spouses as we uncover the mystery behind this age-old trauma. Join our studio audience and find out what to do when a stroke strikes and what medical precautions that you can take. Call 641-1298 now for your free tickets to Twin Cities Live. What you learn just might save your life. Unfortunately, we had to take a break uh, right as you were about to make your point, Eric, and I want to give you uh, your chance to go, go right ahead. But I want to talk about the hypocrisy of this commission, about how uh, unobjective they were going in. I mean, the Citizens for Decency Through Law founder and president, uh, Charles Keating, a neighbor of yours in Scottsdale, felt so comfortable and compatible with your views that during your service on the commission, he and his business associates gave your slate $11,250 for your re-election campaign. Okay. Also, a Franciscan priest, Dr. Uh, Father Bruce Ritter, while he was serving on an objective presidential panel to investigate pornography, received the Citizens for Decency Through Law's first annual Charles Keating Award and received $100,000 from, from, from that organization for his Covenant House activities. I'm not saying... I'm not saying they bought your vote, Diane. I'm saying they were so comfortable with your vote going in that they felt they had to pay tribute to you. This is not an objective commission. Can you imagine if Playboy had given you $11,000? There would have been headlines all across the country. In fact, when the American Civil Liberties Union testified and made the best civil liberties case for our First Amendment freedoms, what was the first question that Chairman Henry Hudson asked the ACLU representatives? He said, is it true that you have received financial support from the Playboy Foundation? So no, it's not uh, a bad shot to ask about contributions when the commission asked. These were sitting commissioners taking money from the leading anti-pornography group in the nation. I think this is a scandal and a sham. But may I have just a moment? First of all, the headquarters of Citizens for Decency Through Law is indeed now located in Scottsdale as of about six months ago. It was not at the time I was put on the commission. I have met this gentleman in question only once and he contributes $200,000 for every political season in, the, in all of Maricopa County. And that's and why in Maricopa of... County you have a district attorney who has cracked down on X-rated video merchants. Isn't that nice? I, I want to make a comment. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. um, I think a, cup, a couple of points need to be clarified here. When the, uh, first the 1970 commission was established, the presidential... Uh, the, their duty was to, the president and the Congress already knew there was a problem with pornography. Their challenge to the commission was to go out and make us a recommendation. They came back without any recommendation. They said it was harmless. No, and they so came back with one, made two major recommendations. The first recommendation they, is the abolition of all obscenity laws across the country. And the second they, one is the institution they, of a massive sex they education didn't program. They come back with a recommendation to get rid of the problem. No, they the said there is no knew problem. The problem was there. You okay. didn't want to hear that. Well, I want to tell you, the, that, that commission was made up of very liberal people. Dean Lockhart from the University of Minnesota, the law school, was the chairman of it. He is an ACLU type. I don't know if he's an actual member of it, but he appointed Bender, who is an ACLU member, for the, to be the legal counsel for that commission. They went in there with preconceived ideas and came out with, pre, and with their conclusions that their preconceived ideas matched up with. Um, I also want to say that at that time there were three minority members on that panel, that commission, who told in their report about the research that was done by the commission and the report, uh, the uh, uh, evidence that they uncovered during their commission studies that the majority tried to sweep under the rug and ignore and pretend that they didn't even exist. Do you the know the name of one of those dissenters? One of those dissenters is uh, Mr. Tusek's friend, Charles Keating. Okay. I've only met him Father once, Lee. folks. Uh, he Father must have been Hill impressed. And, he must have been impressed there. Okay, good. Wait, wait. Let, me, let me take this call from home here now. Good. Go ahead. You're on Twin Cities Live. Your question or comment. Are you there, caller? Um, good morning, by the way. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say that there's one thing that I think has been forgotten, that pornography is supposed to be adult in entertainment. And um, it's by no means supposed to be for children, and children will get a hold of these things, tapes, books, and whatnot, but you need to sit down and explain to your children, this is for an adult 
you don't this is not what goes on no. um you take it away if you take it away from adults then i think that's that's messing up a whole lot of things there because that's that's mm -hmm. against what we're supposed to be doing well one one thing that was very clearly evident from the testimony that we received in all of the cities that we went to was the fact that the so-called adult pornography is used to seduce the children into child sexual abuse this We seem, we seem to be uh, quoting the 1970 report. Well, there's the saying, we've come a long way, baby, <laughs> from the 1970 report in the area of pornography. With our um, in increase in media presentation, explicit picturing, and we all know that a picture is worth a thousand words. Let me, let me, let me, where was, go ahead. <laughs> you mentioned Bruce, Father Bruce Ritter, that 100,000 or whatever it was, I wish it had been 500,000. He uses it to take care of the broken people from pornography. I deal with women who have been victims of pornography, and the real thing is much better than sitting in uh, an office drawing pictures. And that's why that Mies report, when they went around the country asking the individuals, they were the ones that I would follow what they say because they are the victims. So uh, we could take another. Another. <laughs> Excuse me, sister, you know, but I'm going to ask you a question. In the beginning, when Bob Bruce asked, has anybody met, read either of these commission reports? Mm -hmm. Three people in the audience, one of them was me. Your hand was never raised, so you don't even know what's in the Mies commission report. I asked if on um, the book, United States versus Sex, nobody in this room has read it. It seems to me there's like a lot of misguided information being given out here. Are you saying, are you saying that I didn't read the Mies report? I read a summary of it. Um, right now, I think that uh, the writers of the Constitution are probably uh, turning over in their graves knowing that uh, there's a handful of people out there that want to destroy our freedom of choice. Um, I'm not done yet. Also, if I think if these people want to take out uh, Penthouse and uh, Playboy off the shelves, then they should take out Archie Magazine, too, because let's face it, these little kids are reading about uh, Reggie and Archie been trying to get it on with Veronica for 25 years at least, you know? <laughs> When you said that they read this and they go out and they rape people and everything, just because, I mean, you watch TV at night, people kill people. Just because I have a gun, my, hun has a son, or <laughs> my husband has his hunting rifle in house doesn't mean that he goes, oh boy, they killed somebody, I'm going to go out and do that. It takes a sick mind in the first place to go out and do that. I just wanted to say that on a personal viewpoint, I find that... Um, the penthouse magazine can be very harmful. I have a little boy who, when he was seven, went to the playground at the school with three friends to play ball. They found three magazines, one of which was penthouse. They sat in the tires and looked through the whole magazine. Now, most parents want the choice to decide when to teach their children about sex. He came home with it hidden under his sweatshirt. You know, he knew it was wrong, but he didn't, he didn't want to leave it there. He wanted to keep it. And when we found out what it was that he had, you know, my husband talked to him about it. His whole attitude about me as a woman, you know, I could tell how he was looking at me and how he was looking at his sister and how he was just looking at life in general had changed through one afternoon at the playground. When we, we have to take a break here. When we come back, um, I, I want to touch on with both Diane and Eric, the constitutional rights involved in this freedom of speech freedom of the press that sort of thing when we continue on twin cities Live. Why would she? 
Snoop. It's for you. Microwave or oven, either way, it's not a big deal. Hot Pockets, yeah. You get to feel in time special because you're special at your country club market, your neighborhood store. Start your day with refreshing Tropicana frozen orange juice. Home style or regular 12 ounce cans, only 59 cents. Snack time is planter's time, and all planter snacks are specially priced at 69 cents. And Cottonelle bathroom tissue in the four roll pack is at stock up savings now, just 89 cents. What's Montgomery Ward, lowest prices. Where's the talent? He's at the sale. At the sale, aren't he? During our lowest prices of the year sale, some people may not be where they're supposed to. They're out taking advantage of savings like these on our 19-inch stereo remote color TV, our VCR with wireless remote, and we'll match any advertised price on Michelin steel-belted metric radials. Great values all over the store. But the Montgomery Ward lowest prices sale ends Saturday. When will he be back? And who knows when prices will be this low again? Dogs just can't resist new Chewy's flavor sticks. Hey, remember me? I haven't been chased in weeks. Mmm, scrumptious meat coatings on Chewy beef rind. New Chewy's flavor sticks. The chewy treat for dogs that's not gone in a gulp. This is it. It's either me or flavor sticks. Mmm. Chewy's flavor sticks. Great for dogs. Too bad for cats. Mmm. questions uh, that the gentleman behind me brought up is that the, the folks that wrote the Constitution must be turning over in their graves because uh, many people, uh, many very conservative people in this country, see this report as, as, as maybe a step towards uh, losing our, our freedom of the press, and freedom, right of speech, that sort of thing. How do you feel? Okay, well the cutting, the First Amendment uh, is important right at the cutting edge where speech offends many people. Now, sexually oriented material, I think this audience will agree, offends many on political, moral, and aesthetic grounds. But it still stands for an idea. And the problem that I have with the Mies Commission is that when special interest forces, in this case, I think a committed band of uh, religious extremists, joins forces with the federal government and, so, and, 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 some, fem and some feminists. People Let me are being murdered. This there's, is not an idea. Diana, people being murdered? Yes. No, they're not. No, they're yes. not. No, they're not. Oh, you're a liar. You are an accomplice to murder. Yes, your magazine I don't call you is a like liar. a drug. It's like a drug. And you know this what a drug kind? does? Yes, right. it does. You know what a drug does? It alters your behavior. It alters your attitude. This is... Okay. Yes, I do have... No. Excuse me, Bob. I mean, the, the scientific study... Okay, well, wait until you're done. In the blue suit to stand up, and you give some evidence that is in the court records of people who have been murdered or have been violated, whose lives have been wrecked. Yes, uh, look, we have we've had a number of cases uh, locally. We had a, a very uh, celebrated case this past year in Minneapolis where a man uh, viewed a video that's advertised in uh, in uh, your magazine, Penthouse and Forum, a movie called Taboo and went out and uh, raped his mother. He viewed this movie with his friends, came home, one o'clock in the morning, raped his mother. We've had another case uh, locally here where in the, his sworn court testimony, a 23-year-old man uh, admitted while he was babysitting a four-year-old girl, he was reading uh, Playboy and was overcome with sexual urges and uh, raped this four-year-old child and gave her gonorrhea. And he was sentenced based on Basically. Let me let Eric have a chance. Okay, to jump in here. I mean, these are sick individuals, no, and I think it, I think it is a cop out for the. I think, ma'am, can I speak? I think it is a cop out. I think it is a cop out for a guy who goes out and commits a heinous crime to say, "Hey, I was normal. I was fine. I saw a picture, and something snapped." Uh, it's a defense I don't believe. The jury didn't believe it. They sent him to prison. Diane, yeah. Diane, go ahead. Wait. Let, 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 wait. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. I looked wait. at a magazine because I wanted to see what, what was in my community. I wanted to know what was happening in my community because X-rated movies were coming in, that we are being merchandised. 
These are the merchandise. Okay, now let, let me let Diane have a chance to yeah. Okay, go ahead, Diane. You talk about the framers of the Constitution turning over in their grave. They would turn over in their grave, folks, if they saw some of the things that we have seen on this commission. Wait a minute. Please, please. You, talk, you talk about people being harmed, about danger, about physical abuse, and even murder. I have seen films of that. I have seen a film of a man and a woman having intercourse in a bathtub that was full of blood because the woman's legs had been cut off. I have seen a film of a woman shackled to the wall with screws oh, through Karen, her nipples Karen, and right, her vulva right, right, Diane, being it's, manipulated it's, right, by a pulley right. until her flesh separates. It's, now that is damage, folks. These, oh, these oh, oh. are films. This is not really happening in the film. Oh, if, come on. If, hey, I go see, I, excuse me, please, please. I go see, I go see Rambo and I see 500 Orientals shot and I don't want to suppress Rambo because I think it's racist or whatever. I think there has to be a distinction made between fantasy and between reality. And no matter how right, bad the message is. And I think to make social policy based on the reactions of psychos to some material is misguided federal policy. I'm and sorry. And hijack of the federal government by religious extremists. Women are tired of supporting your industry. We are tired of making you rich there are snuff films where they take young girls and actually murder them as part of the film. You can't deny that. This commission received yeah. testimony they couldn't Nobody find Nobody is making film. anybody buy these men. I have never bought one, but I think if I wanted to, I'd have every right to do it. I'm over 18. I can do what I want. But nobody is making you buy one or anybody who's against it buy one. You are buying that concept of consenting adults. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected that concept of consenting adults. They said rights and interests of others are involved. The right of that 16-year-old girl not to be raped is involved. The right of that woman to have her 7-year-old boy go to the playground without being exposed to sexually explicit material is involved. But the colonizer is wrong. It's time we try to demand the laws to be enforced. Oh, wait till she's done. Um, the lady down there said that, uh, that women are being merchandised. Well, men pose for Playgirl, too, and uh, so that means that men are being merchandised. So. Yeah, and Playgirl went well, bankrupt. Well, well, you said women. You well, said we. You said we. All right, I want to give Eric a chance. Okay. okay. Uh, also, I know a lot of, an awful lot of women that read Penthouse and Playboy, and they happen to love it. Uh, I'm, I subscribe to uh, Playboy, so I'm going to go out and rape and pillage, okay? <laughs> Eric? Okay. I think this... Uh, commission and this audience doesn't want to hear that millions of Americans, men and women, enjoy pornography. This commission heard testimony from sexologists and from therapists saying it helped people in their sex lives, it helped marriages, it was healthy sexual... I, I knew you wouldn't want to hear it. <laughs> it and this commission never... Pr Americans vote with their pocketbooks in this culture. And that is, that's absolutely darn right. And that is why um, erotica will always be around because it's pleasurable and endorsed and loved by millions of healthy Americans. Let me stop you right there. We'll be back with Twin Cities Live. We'll continue in just a moment. your Basso Love Dinner. Look. Country Crock Corn Oil Spread? It's new. Made from 100% corn oil. That is new. With no cholesterol. You'll go for that. Rich, buttery Country Crock taste, too. I'll go for that. Mm -mm, you've gone far enough. <laughs> Rich, buttery, shed spread Country Crock. And now, new Country Crock Corn Oil Spread, too. Made from 100% corn oil with no cholesterol and fewer calories than the leading corn oil margarine. Dinner was a success. Especially the Country Crock Corn Oil Spread. Your boss is really funny. Yeah, you two have quite a sense of humor. Well, we need one. <laughs> Rudy, you're doing it again. Rudy Perpich is still saying he won't raise taxes. Then he announces some hidden secret tax plan he's going to unveil in December after the election. Now, if that secret plan wasn't a killer, don't you think Rudy would be unveiling it before the election? Rudy Perpich is hiding something. And if you think it's not a galloping tax increase, that's the biggest fairy tale of all. Cal Ludeman tells the truth about where he stands on taxes. Ludeman for governor. The Ice Capades, America's number one family show, is coming to the Met Center October 21st through the 26th. 
See their all-new production featuring the outstanding talents of Ty Babylonia and Randy Gardner. Join KSTP when we host opening night Tuesday, October 21st at 7.30. All tickets will be half price. And also join me, Joe Schmidt, for a special free skating clinic with one of the stars of the Ice Capades Wednesday, October 22nd at 3.30. Don't be left out in the cold. We'll see you at the Met Center for the Ice Capades. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how to protect yourself? How to stop criminals from getting into your home, your car, or stealing all of your possessions? Next Tuesday's Twin Cities Live, we are going to show you just that. We'll meet a former convict turned anti-crime advocate and find out what his total security plan is all about. He's going to give us some good tips. 641-1298 is the number to call for your free studio tickets. The next Tuesday's show, you'll also meet Minneapolis Police Chief Tony Boza, who will reveal the status of crime in the city. At 641-1298 for free tickets, and this could be one show that you really can't afford to miss. Come on in for our home-style double burger with cheese and bacon, now only $1.59. Looks, cooks, and tastes like homemade. Thick, juicy, and tender. Our home-style double burger with golden cheese and savory bacon. Now only $1.59. The best deal this side of home is at Dairy Queen. We're a small town, homegrown, made the way you make your own pizza. Pizza. I laid it on and loaded up with lots of mozzarella on the pizza. from Kellogg's, part of this nutritious breakfast. Gently put in the ego. The book by Eric Nadler is The United States of America versus Sex, How the Mies Commission Lied About Pornography. That is the book by Eric. And then in my arms here, I have two very large volumes that Diane was involved in, and this is, of course, the Attorney General's Commission on pornography. Uh, first of all, Eric, I want to start with you on and how you feel that the commission lied about pornography. Oh, because it uh, took a very limited scientific data and made sweeping conclusions that the material, sexually oriented material, caused harm to women, resulted in sex crimes. There, uh, it's wishful thinking on the part of this commission. They didn't have the proof. Also, it never asked. It lied by omission. Never asked the fundamental question: Why do millions of Americans? enjoy sexually oriented materials and the other omission was that it refused to discuss seriously what if you're truly concerned about the effect of this material on your children sex education in the schools which all leading government panels on this had discussed previously the fundamentalists on this commission didn't want to touch that topic with a 10-foot pole well eric how do you square your ideas then with the gallup poll and other polls that said the American public, you get different percentages, 85, 86, 87 percent of people agreed with the commission and want enforcement of the laws. You know, for those of us who work in this area, this is a great day because Mies today is going to set up the task force and announce who it is so we can get prosecution. Okay. What uh, kind of effect, Eric, by the way, uh, what kind of effect as, a, as an, an editor of a, of a magazine, what kind of effect will uh, Commissioner Mies, if he does indeed an, announce a task force today, what kind of effect is that going to have on publishing in this country? What you're going to see is the introduction of this report in conservative uh, jurisdictions by conservative prosecutors speaking to people who somehow believe if a government is put out, if a report is put out by a federal commission, then it's reputable. I think we're going to see the Mies report have an effect in the courtroom, uh, which it doesn't deserve, because if you look closely at the report, and even the opponents, read my book, read it, and then we'll talk you'll find this commission uh, isn't worth the paper it's printed on this report. Eric, you talked about as far as 
what Diana talked about her viewing as far as the different people who have been abused. You said it was acting. What do you have to say about the child pornography? Can you tell me that that's acting, that those children are willingly acting in sexual acts in those films? If we would just enforce the laws that are in the books, half of those would be gone. Child pornography, Bob, let me ask that. Child pornography a is a terrible crime, and uh, I'm against it. Um, it Child pornography is a terrible crime. There are laws on the books about it. It was used as a smear against adult erotica. All right, I think my comments fit in here because I would like to refer you to a film. Uh, first I read this article and then I saw the video film by Dr. Holland, a pediatrician from Memphis, Tennessee. I mean, it's a blood curdling true report on, on child abuse and invariably it pointed back, and I mean these are documented facts, it pointed back to pornography and the sexual arousal that caused these people to do these terrible things. And the lady said, do we have a right? Her film is called, uh, he, she said, we have no right to tell people what to read. But this film was named, Do I Have a Right? We have a right to stand against this terrible thing because our children and our grandchildren and our neighbor's children are at stake. That film, by the way. I Where does the, the censorship stop? When, when do our rights stop being taken away? Um, I'm a, a married legal adult. Uh, and my husband and I enjoy reading Penthouse at home. Uh, we, get, we get satisfaction from it, but neither of us is demented or sick, which I heard somebody comment about behind me. We're not sick. We find it as a, an enhancement to our marriage not a detriment. Well, again, you're confusing the definition of pornography with well, obscene I'm, I'm material. Okay, that's, that's a tightrope you walk there. In, in communities, it's, po what is it's pornography, of it's of pornography of until of a obscenity. conservative prosecutor decides to prosecute it. Then it becomes obscenity. It is not an obscenity until a jury <laughs> finds it so, that's right. and you know that. Hotel accommodations and dining provided by the Radisson University Hotel, 615 Washington Avenue Southeast, on the University of Minnesota East Bank campus. Limousine service for the guest of Twin Cities Live, provided by Henderson Chauffeur Cadillacs. Just got a couple of uh, a minute or so left. I want to thank both of you, Diane and Eric, for being with us today. I'm sure this is a topic that's going to be much discussed, especially after the news conference today, later today by the Attorney General. Go ahead. Um, I've been trained to be against censorship as an elementary teacher with a minor in library science, but I must admit I agree with this woman in her commission. Getting back to sex education, uh, the lady said something about um, she wanted to know when to educate her children. Well, I think she should start when they first start to speak, and not only that, but uh, you have to know something about it to teach them. So, you know. I would just like to thank the commission for your hard work. We've we reduced taxes one billion four hundred million dollars, and we intend to do the same in the next four years. On the 87, 88, 89. Our entire uh, effort is going to be on property taxes. You're paying less taxes now than three years ago because we reduced the taxes, and so we're going to continue to do that. Well, that's You're a comfort to know, too, Governor. Yeah. Yeah. Rudy Perfich means what he so, says. No new taxes for Minnesota. Perfich, moving Minnesota forward. <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. <laughs> You'll find Ruth Spencer on Eyewitness News. Good morning and welcome to Twin Cities Live, and this will be, I think, one of the most interesting hours I think we've done since I've been doing the show. Uh, it is about hypnosis.